Welcome to Magnus Theater. My name is Tom, I'm the artistic director here. Now, this is a series that we call Looking Back at Magnus, wherein I get on a video call with individuals who have been significant in the history of this 50-year-old Canadian regional theater. Michael McLaughlin was Magnus Theatre's artistic director from 1987 to 1992. In his five seasons at the helm, Michael established Magnus as the professional theatre for all of Northwestern Ontario. He oversaw a massive expansion to the entire organization, taking theatre and education programs and theatre for young audiences performances from the Manitoba border to Sault Ste. Marie and to fly in communities in the extreme north. He also took selected shows from the main stage to those same communities throughout the region, establishing Magnus Theatre's regional touring program. All of this while he was overseeing the work on the main stage at the old theatre on McLaughlin Street here in Thunder Bay. So now, here's my conversation with Michael McLaughlin. What brought you to Magnus Theatre? What? Uh... Well, they, they offered me a job. Well, I'm sure. <laughs> that was it. Um, I was actually, at that time, I was working as an associate director at the Arts Club Theatre in, here in Vancouver. Okay. And uh, I, I worked there for a couple of years. I, I had worked there uh, previously on a Canada Council grant. Because I had started as a, a freelance director and I had started my own theatre company in Vancouver. Uh, but I kind of felt like I needed to know, know more about the business. Uh, you know, like I, I would do like cooperative productions. We did like the first cooperative production ever staged, apparently. Um, and uh, but I kind of felt like I needed more to know, know more about the business. And the Arts Club was a good place to do that because Bill Bill, Bill Miller was the artistic director there uh, and uh, had a very good uh, business savvy about him. And so I went there on a Canada. I got a Canada Council grant and I went to work there for a year. And then they hired me as an associate director. And I was looking to. Um, uh, I think that was clear to all of us that I was looking for uh, an opportunity to run a theater. And this uh, and so Magnus Theater came up and I knew something about it because um, I knew Tibor uh, from here and there, I guess, from PAC meetings and things. I knew Brian Richmond because he was also associated with uh, with uh, the Arts Club uh, through various shows that had come to the Arts Club or that he had directed there. And so I applied for the job and I got it. Fantastic. So I went. That's great. Um, I've asked everybody, and everybody has similar but very personal answers. Uh, when you first arrived in Thunder Bay, what was your impression? Well, when, uh, the first time I well, I had actually driven through Thunder Bay in the 1970s when I was actually coming from the East Coast uh, to uh, to uh, to Vancouver. Um, but when I went there, the first time I was the first time I was really there uh, was when I went for my interview, and it was um, I guess it was uh, cold and uh, it was in the winter, and it was um, bleak was I, I think the the word I, I used to describe it, and it also reminded me a lot of the town that I grew up in, which is St. John, New Brunswick, um, which is also an industrial town, a port town, um, uh, kind of a rough and tumble kind of a place. It certainly was at the time. So um, I thought, well, I, I know what I'm getting into. So uh, so here I am. And, uh, and I, you know, it, it was a very good opportunity for me to, uh, to uh, run a theater company because that was something that I was looking to do, and I hadn't. Uh, this was the first opportunity I had to do it. So uh, I was keen to be there. You were very visible in the community. Um, you were very plugged into the community, um, which is, is not always the case with the artistic directors uh, right. like, like Magnus. How, how do you feel about that? Um, well, I, I did, uh, I, I think I'm like that. Um, it's funny because at the time, of course, people were saying, well, you're not uh, you're not uh, plugged into the community. Like if I didn't hire, if I didn't do some local playwrights play, then, well, I'm not plugged into the community. Or if I didn't hire a local actor for a particular production, uh, I wasn't plugged into the community. Although, you know, I did I did hire local people and there were some very, very talented people in, in uh, Thunder Bay. David Smythe, uh, who was a musical director for me on a couple of shows, uh, uh, Lila Sano. I think who's still there and um, and uh, Heather Esden I don't know if you know about Heather Esden but she actually moved to uh, Thunder Bay she's passed away but uh, she moved to Thunder Bay and I cast her in Shirley Valentine which was actually the last show I did at Magnus Theatre and uh, she was just fabulous in it and uh, she's a very talented lady okay. um, but I guess I am kind of like that and and I you know I think I've carried that um, 
uh, other places, other places that I have been. And I don't know if that's necessarily uh, all that conscious. Uh, you know, it's it's not necessarily a conscious attempt to schmooze the community. It's yeah. it's I think it's just a matter of, well, that's who I am. And uh, I want people to know me. And, um, you know, some people say, well, you're just too big for the room. But uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, I guess that's I guess that. Well, I'm glad to hear that. That's that's a nice thing for someone to say. Um, what would you say? Was your uh, what, what is your, was your your fondest artistic moment at Nikes? Well, um, I would have to say that my favorite uh, shows were the musicals that I did. Right. Uh, I, I did um, uh, uh, <laughs> the favorite John Gray musicals that I did. I did uh, uh, Eighteen Wheels. Yeah. Uh, and David Swipe was a musical director for that, um, and I, that was when it, how I met David and. Um, uh, uh, I did uh, uh, rock and roll. And David was the artist, was the uh, musical director for that. And I did Billy Bishop Goes to War. And um, I, I actually wanted David to be the art, to, to be the musical director for that, but he was a guitar guy, right? And uh, but and it was someone else that we had worked with uh, who had been in the band and other shows, Danny Johnson. Yeah, and yeah. Danny Johnson, fabulous musician himself, but he's 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 he can play multi instruments. Where where David is pretty much a guitar guy, and so da uh, Danny was the uh, musical director for Billy Bishop. Wow! So so those you are now. Do you consider yourself a music theater guy, or do you? I don't know. I, I, I actually I don't. And um, but these were kind of like they're like kind of cha chamber musicals. I think a, a big musical is not kind of the the kind of thing that I would do. But chamber musicals and kind of things that kind of uh, that I could relate to them. I, I myself can relate to. I think are are shows that I'm interested to do. And you know. When I when I arrived in Thunder Bay, I kind of you know I thought okay well I'm here and this is my first job and uh, okay now what am I going to do, and 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 it wasn't very long before I I I realized that there was a tremendous opportunity here to build something, and so I came up with these ideas of how to approach this, how to build this, and you know you're talking about community engagement, so one of the things that we did was we started a theater a theater and education program, which I think is still going today, uh, which which is which is great. And we had um, now um, I, I I get some of the credit for it, but all of the credit for this program goes to a, a woman named Karen Drazy, who was actually my partner at the time. She she came uh, and 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 uh, she came to Thunder Bay, but she uh, she was British and she had um, she had an exceptional uh, skill and talent for uh, theater and education kind of activities. That's, that was her, uh, that was her uh, education, in fact. She'd gone to Rose Bruford uh, School in, in London. Um, and of course, if people were skeptical of me, you know, you can imagine how skeptical they were of this Brit oh, like coming that. in to work with teachers who, you know, in, in a community, a Brit is going to come in and work with teachers and tell them how to do it, how it's done. And uh, she overcame that. She became like a hero uh, to those people, um, to those teachers. So we had we had that. We started uh, uh, like, uh, well, we, we reinvigorated the uh, theater school. Mm -hmm. There had been a theater school, but it had sort of closed down. And we also started a, a theater and education touring program. So we figured we, that our our shows would go from the Manitoba border to, let's say, Sault Ste. Marie, yep. you know, and up around Highway 11, up around into Capus Casing and the places that not, not all those many people wanted to go. And in fact, some shows that we did, we actually did fly-ins to uh, 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 Native communities. Um, and, and those things, I think, had a lasting impact and, 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 and uh, made... Uh, I think make made a lasting impression on the community about how uh, Magnus could be important to the community. Yeah. And so, you know, all kudos to, uh, to Karen Drazy for that. She was, she was, she was fantastic. She did a lot of good uh, for our company in that community and for the community itself. And the other thing I started there was I thought, okay, well, um, if we're going to be engaged in our community, what's our community? And, and again, I thought, well, okay, our community is really uh, the Manitoba border to Sault Ste. Marie, yep. right? And so uh, I, I thought, well, really what we should do is we should, we should, um, 
you know, because we had already started the um, uh, uh, theater and education program and the theater and, uh, theater and education touring program, and I thought, well, we should take main stage. Pro- we should we should take main stage shows uh, on tour. I felt that it was it would be a good thing for us to do this because a we could probably do it a bit cheaper than some than a company coming from Toronto, and um, and that we we kind of had a closer connection. To that area and that we you know it was it was a, a symbiotic thing i thought was going to happen um there's not a lot from uh not a lot of information about your time um uh, largely because of the fire um because there were there was a fire at the offices right that's correct and um i i guess it was arson nobody seems to it know. was arson yes they determined that it was arson there was um well, um, there was a, 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 a homeless person who had managed to get in and uh, go into the basement. And uh, we had a costume uh, a costume room in the basement of the office that was just chock-a-block with stuff. So it's no, matter, no wonder the place burned down. But he didn't get in there, but he got into the sort of antechamber in the basement be- before that, at the bottom of the stairwell. And somehow... He apparently he lit a fire. Like I don't think it was arson in. Uh, I think it was deliberate. I think it was set fire. I don't know if the guy was intending to burn the house down, yeah. um, but it's that started the fire. I, as I said, I lived across the street from it, and um, we it was that was in our twentieth anniversary season, and so we had uh, we had uh, a lot going on, right? We had um, uh, we had a show on our stage, which is a co production remember if it was a co section or a presentation of a show called Selkirk Avenue, which which came from Theater Prairie Theater Exchange, okay. was on our stage. Uh, we had um, uh, the Anger and Ernest and Ernestine was in rehearsal, right. and we had our 20th anniversary production touring production of Get This She Stoops to Conquer oh, dear God. on tour. So we had 18 people out on tour, oh. right? And th- th- that was quite a quite a thing because I actually had. The convinced the Canada Council to let us take this show directly off our main stage on tour. Right. And they said, well, usually we want to vet the show, you know, and we want to do this. And I said, yes, okay, and I understand that, but this show is never going to be remounted, right? We, it's, it's just impossible. The only way that we can actually do this show, to take the show on tour, is to take it directly from the main stage so we don't incur all those uh, remounting costs. Right. And they agreed to it. Um, so that, that was great. And so when this happened, it was just, uh, it was the busiest time. It was the 20th anniversary season. It was the busiest time of our entire year. And, uh, I remember I was, uh, I was at home and I heard a fire trucks, uh, coming and, um, and I thought, oh, and you need, sometimes you would hear that and they would go by, right? <laughs> Except right. these ones just stopped. And um, I had an actor staying with me, Tom Macbeth. I don't know if you know Tom Macbeth. He's a Vancouver actor, brilliant, brilliant actor. Sort of semi-retired now, but he was in the Selkirk Avenue show. He was on the, the- he was in the theater, uh, Prairie Theater Exchange show. And he was staying with me. He came out of his room and he said, you know what, those fire, th- yeah, I think your building's on fire. <laughs> and, and so I kind of lo- went and looked at the window and I thought, yes, it is. Um, so... Um, so I immediately called our general manager uh, at the time. Her name was Karen Lewis. And I said, you better come down here because our building is on fire. Oh. And uh, we went out and um, we sort of got over to the right across the street to the building. And um, the firemen were there. They were going in and out. There was smoke all through our offices on the main floor, right? There was smoke all through the office. And we went in <laughs> and started taking things out. Right. Right. And the fire, the fire chief guy, the fire guy came and said, what are you doing? And I said, we need to get some as much stuff out of here as we can. This is our business. Right. The first thing we did was we took out the tickets. They were all tick, they were all hard tickets. Right. There was no uh, no printed. You know, you don't print the tickets as you go. They would buy them in bulk at the beginning of the year. Right. So all of our tickets for the whole season were sitting there, hard copy tickets. And it was a reservation system. It was an old, very old style kind of thing. We got that stuff out. We got managed to get one computer out, the general manager's computer, uh, and a bunch of other things that came out, but not a lot. And then they said, okay, you got to go. You can't get out of here now. And uh, and so then we were standing outside. We took the stuff up into my house uh, and, and uh, into my apartment, and um, 
we were standing outside and uh, just watched the place burn. And it's funny because uh, the CDC at that time was uh, right across the street from where I lived, sort of. Um, and uh, maybe they're still there. I don't know. But, um, well, there was an end. So somebody came and it was an inter- uh, some a reporter came and, and they said, uh, you're the, yeah, I think they recognized me or something. I can't remember. And um, they said, well, what are you going to do? And I said, well, the first thing we need to do is we need to, and I'm just saying this off the top of my head, is we need to reestablish contact with our customers, with our patrons. Because, and I said, it, it needs to be very clear to everybody that what's burning here is our office, not our theater. Right. There's a show on in our theater that's going to go on. Now, this was like three o'clock in the morning by this time, two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning. There's a show that's going to go on tonight. So please, if you're going to do anything, let people know that the show is going to go on. And I said, if there's anything that we need, it's to be able to get in communication with our, to maintain communication with our patrons. And then miraculously, at about seven o'clock in the morning, somebody phoned, and I don't know if they phoned me or they phoned the general manager or who they phoned. And it was a a representative of a telephone, a, a cellular telephone company saying, we've got some phones for you. Wow. And, and, and they gave us the phones. And so, um, and then the next day, uh, I, I got up in the morning, or God didn't get up, and I looked out the next morning, and the roof of the building, it's a three-story building, brick building, the roof of the building had collapsed and was sitting on the floor of our office. Yeah. Right? And uh, I thought, oh, my God. <laughs> So I had to kind of phone all of the uh, the funders and say, guess what? Guess what's happened? And then sort of update them on what was going on. Right. We uh, we were setting up the same time we were setting up our uh, we were setting up our office in the dressing rooms of the theater, uh, which the actors were not that pleased about. But, you know, what would get what were we going to do? Um, and um, and then we just started to sort of put things back together. I mean, one of the things like in terms of. Uh, in the fire, in a sense, was kind of the last straw uh, uh, in some ways. Now, not for me, but it was the last straw for McLaughlin Street because we had been doing um, a lot of uh, development work to build a theater or to get out of McLaughlin Street. Of course, with doing school, theater and education things, with doing regional touring, with, with doing a full main stage season mm-hmm. and, and, and theater school, we were bursting at the seams yeah. everywhere we were, in the office, in, uh, in the production, production office, which was a trailer, and yeah. uh, they built sets in this trailer. <laughs> so yeah. It was amazing. It was amazing what was accomplished. And this theater. And, and, and so we had spent a good deal of time uh, trying, to, um, uh, trying to move forward with uh, facilities development. And one of the things that I felt uh, uh, badly about was the fact that it never, went, it never went to the next step. But I think with the fire, and once they got rid of me, um, they, the board and I guess Mario, they, they, they took it. They took it and they ran with it and they built this place. Michael, thank you so much for chatting with me. Um, I'm going to let you go and uh, I hope to talk to you again soon. Okay. Thanks, Tom. Very, very pleasant to talk to you. Okay. We'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye-bye. When he left Magnus Theatre, Michael returned to the West Coast where he went on to become the artistic producer of Theatre One in Nanaimo and the executive artistic producer of the Vancouver Fringe Festival. Thank you very much, Michael, for chatting with me about your time at Magnus Theatre in Thunder Bay.